I'm going to walk you through um, building a simulation of a Q model in Excel. Um, and so this is the Excel document. You'll see it attached with the videos. And I'll just kind of show you that it is pretty complicated. So you may not understand kind of everything that I'm doing here, but I just want to walk you through all the different pieces. So you can see here, I've got my mu, my lambda, and my delta t. Um, and I don't didn't mention this in the videos, um, but for all of these models to work, mu has to be larger than lambda. Um, otherwise, a q won't form. Um, if lambda, remember lambda is the probability that somebody um, arrives in the q, or lambda is the probability that somebody arrives in the q, uh, mu is the probability that they leave. Um, and so if you don't have mu larger than lambda, um, your q doesn't work properly. So here mu is, is larger than lambda, and so we have a working q, okay? And so you can see also the delta t. So my time step here, you want it to be small so that this is a good simulation. And so my time step here is 0 0.01 uh, minutes, I guess, okay? So um, just to kind of walk through all of this, my first column is time. It's going up by 0 0.01 each unit. I do a full hour, so there's actually 6,000 data points here, six, um, going all the way down, 6,001, I guess. Um, and then my next one here is the number of people in the queue, okay? And so it starts at one. We assume that there's one person in the queue at the beginning. And then I've got this very complicated statement here um, that gives me the number of people in the queue. Effectively, what this is saying, so this is much more complicated than it seems to be because if my queue drops below zero, I don't want to get negative people in my queue, okay? And so if my probability is less than a certain point, um, if I've only got, z if I've got zero people in the queue, I don't, nobody can leave, right? And so it's just checking that. But basically kind of the main part of it is this section uh, right here that I'm highlighting, okay? And what that's saying is we take B2, the number of people who are in the queue already, and then if um, our C3, which is our probability that somebody arrives, is less than H1 times H3, so mu times delta T. So if our arrival probability, which is just a random number, um, is less than mu delta T, um, then another person joins the queue, one or zero. And then similarly, if our departure probability is less than H2, which is lambda times delta T. So if our departure probability is less than lambda delta T, one person leaves, right? It's minus one, um, and if not, zero people leave. And then otherwise, the rest of this is just kind of making sure that if it drops lower than zero, we don't do that, okay? So my arrival probability and my finish probability are just random numbers between zero and one. And so we're just using those as kind of like environmental stochasticity, where we're checking whether mu delta t is less than that number and whether lambda delta t is less than that number to decide whether somebody arrives or it leaves, okay? Um, the next two columns here um, keep track of the total number of customers that have entered. So you can see um, when we start off, one person has entered. Um, that person is in line for 4.1 minutes, according to my details. You can see for a long time, there's just one person in line. Oh, and then at some point, at 1.45, a second person arrives. And so now two people have entered. There are two people in the queue. At 4.1 minutes, which is gonna be in row 410, or no, sorry, a little bit later, 412, you can see the first person leaves. So we go from having seven people in the queue to six people in the queue. So one person has now left. Um, and so I'm keeping track of those so I can keep track of my statistics. Um, the rest of this spreadsheet is just kind of um, bookkeeping. So you can see the queue grows as we go along. We've got seven people, eight people, seven, six, as we go along um, through the whole hour. And then what I've got over here and you can look at how I figured this out if you want to, but each of this is each customer. So customer number one arrived at time zero and left at 4.1. So they waited 4.1 minutes total to be served. Uh, customer two arrived at 1.44. 
right? That's when the uh, number of customers in line jumped up to two, is at 1.44, um, and then they left at 4.43. So it wasn't much long hour after customer one was served that they left, so they waited 2.99 minutes. Um, and similar, all of these. Getting these numbers was a little tricky. Um, you can see how I do that with X lookup um, if you're interested. Look at those formulas. Okay? So um, as far as average wait time, um, I've got my predicted value, which is 1 over mu minus lambda. That was the predicted wait time um, for the um, uh, from those data. And similarly, my average Q size is lambda over mu minus lambda, right? 5. And so then my simulated average wait time comes from averaging the wait times of all the customers. So you can see here I've got how long each customer waited, and we average those, and we get 12.97 is our simulated in this particular with these particular random numbers. Um, the average Q size comes from averaging the number of people in the queue. And so that's 9.13 here instead of 5. So you can see my simulated average wait time is pretty close. My average queue size is pretty different. Um, that's really just because I'm only doing this for an hour um, and only going through 27 customers. So if you did this for much longer, hours and hours, you would see that it, it's much closer to 10 and 5. Um, it averages out. But this, even though this is 6,000 data points, it's actually not that many um, as far as a simulation like this is concerned um, for it to average out properly. Okay? So you can play around with these numbers. You can change mu and lambda. Um, so for example, if you increase the rate at which people, um, the probability that somebody arrives, uh, that's going to increase your average wait time, um, increase your average queue size. Uh, you can see in my simulation, it doesn't quite add up. Again, because um, you really don't have, if you're only doing this for an hour, an average wait time of 20 minutes isn't really going to show up just because it's so much larger. Um, if we decrease this, um, the uh, average wait time and the average queue size uh, similarly aren't super close. But again, you can play around with these numbers um, and, and see kind of what happens with the simulation. Again, if you really wanted to get numbers that are close here, you'd need to simulate for much longer than um, 6,000 data points. Uh, and that probably wouldn't be a good idea in Excel. Okay? So that's how you can build a simulation of a queuing model like this.